Hey there YouTube, welcome back to the Allegheny Northern in N-Scale. Today we're going to do another how-to video and the topic of today's video is weathering, specifically weathering locomotives. So what I wanted to do was take a locomotive that was relatively dark in color and something that uh, would really show the effects of the weathering, even a light weathering job. This is that locomotive. So this is the GP38 by Atlas. It was originally a DC model, converted to DCC recently with a Digitrax decoder. So it's ready for the layout. You may have seen it in some of the videos running around with one of the SW15s. Um, so right now it is factory, factory painted, decaled, and one thing you'll notice especially in the areas with this model because there are dark spots uh, on the trucks, on the fuel tanks, these radiators. You lose the detail as soon as the light source isn't right on. So from a distance here, all you see is this black underside and you don't really see all of the fine detail that's molded into the trucks. This may not be as prevalent in some of the larger scales, but for us down here at N scale, uh, you're missing a lot of the detail on these things if you can't see what's molded onto the plastic. So, today's goal is to bring out that, that detail and to make this look a little more realistic. The reason I chose this one above others uh, that are in my collection, because I've got a lot of locomotives ready to, to be weathered, is it's dark, not only in the paint shell, uh, or the paint color on the shell, but also in the trucks on the underside, and two, this is a relatively new paint scheme for CSX, so we can uh, imagine that it's maybe not something that's been on the road for a long time. Therefore, we don't have to go heavy on the weather and just enough to bring out the detail. So I'm gonna show you a couple of different products and then I'm gonna show you which ones we're gonna use to bring out the detail on this locomotive. Okay, first up is the Pan Pastels. I think at this point everybody has either used them, seen them, heard about them. They are a very soft pastel uh, type material. It's, it's a chalky, dusty. It is wonderful for weathering. It has a bonding agent in it. The bonding agent helps it stick to a surface, uh, whether it's a, a building or a, a locomotive or a piece of freight car. If it's going to be on something that's going to get handled. I recommend that you still seal it with a dull coat just to make sure that you don't rub all the, the weathering detail off. But this is going to stick a little bit better than just a ground up chalk pastel wood. So this is one of your options for weathering. One of the other options that we have, and it's something that's uh, relatively new to me, I'm just starting to get into it and, and I really do like it, and that is pigments. So I have several pigments, they are by AK Interactive, and they are basically, they're powder. And there is a pigment binder that this mixes with. And when you mix the two together, this turns into a, a paste almost, almost like a very thick paint. And the reason that's useful is for dirt and mud and rust and stuff that's caked on and not just necessarily, uh, it gives a 3D texture almost to to the dirt and grime that you're putting on. So I'm gonna show you how this works a little bit. I don't know if I'm gonna use it for this model yet. I haven't decided, but one of my videos will cover how to use pigments. The other thing, and I'm sure that everyone has seen it or has used it or heard about it, is the washes. Um, and the washes that I'm using, once again, AK Interactive. These are uh, an enamel and they are, uh, they're great. So it's, a, it's, it's an already thin paint built, made into a wash and it does a wonderful job of getting into all the cracks and the crevices and, and the parts that you want to highlight on, on a layout, uh, on a model, building, or train. So there's different types. This one is streaking ground, of course, but there's, there's many different types and they're all, um, they all serve a purpose from whether you're just doing general weathering um, or some fuel stains and they give the effect of basically whatever it is that they're telling you <laughs> is on there. So that's your that's your other option. Then of course we have another um, variation of, of the weathering, which is a Vallejo. This is a simple acrylic paint, nothing nothing crazy with it, but it, it's geared towards 
weathering and um, you know the the modeling industry that, that may be doing either military models or, or, or training models. So these are, these are the techniques that we're going to be using today. Uh, I'm going to show you how all of this works. I don't use an airbrush uh, for the main reason that I don't have an airbrush. I've been able to get by this far without it. And although I think some things would be easier with an airbrush, we can, we can make do without. And as you recall, I'm only going to weather this enough to bring out the details not enough to make it look like it's been in service for 20 years. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so my uh, locomotive here is ready for phase one of weathering. What I've done is I've cut out some masking tape. It's just blue painter's tape. And I've cut it around the windows and around the trucks. Okay, so the windows should be self-evident. I don't want to get any sort of dull coat or any of the weathering powders or anything on the uh, the glass. Okay, so that's easy. But the trucks, you might go, okay, well, I thought we were weathering the trucks. That was what you were talking about. I am. But because I'm going to be using powders on the locomotive itself and two coats of dull coat, one coat to, to first seal the model uh, that gives me a zero start, so that if I screw up, I can always get the weathering back off um, to the point of the doll coat without damaging the decals underneath. Let's say, look at this way, reducing the risk of damaging the decals underneath. The other thing is I'm not going to be using powders on the trucks itself. So because this is where our electrical contact for the locomotive comes from, I don't want any kind of powder or, or spray or anything to get in the gears on the contacts, if it does, you can clean it. It's a pain in the ass. It's just easier to protect it and try to avoid that altogether. So all I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take doll coat. It's nothing It's nothing special. I'm sure you've all seen it. It is a tester's product. It is simply just a uh, an aerosol spray. It's a little shake can. I know that everyone's like, well, you don't get control with a spray can. You need to use a, 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 uh, a professional, Airbrush, yeah, I hear you. No, you don't. This this will work just fine. You got to be careful with it though, um, because you don't get the control that you get with an airbrush. You need to keep it back just far enough so that you get a nice even coating. Don't forget, just like a real airbrush, you start spraying before the model and you finish after you've passed the model. Uh, that way, you get a nice even coat across the the entire body and you don't get splotches. So. I'm going to go ahead and spray this. I have to spray it off to the side here because I don't want to get it all over the place. And then I'll be back in just a quick second. Okay, welcome back. So I've applied doll coat to this model. Now, I don't know that you can tell it um, through the camera here, but it does It does do exactly that. It, it dulls the plastic shine of the model. So it's a little more visible to the, to the eye than to having a light directly shining on it. Um, that noise you hear in the background is a fan that I've got running. Um, turn that on when I use the, the aerosol because it does need a well-ventilated space. Um, I am working in a basement, so uh, that's not a well-ventilated space, so I do the best that I can. Um, be careful when you're using it. Don't use it near um, an open flame source or um, an enclosed space because it's, pretty, it's pretty, pretty nasty stuff. So, But a couple of things that it's done. One, it's dulled the... Um, overall finish of the model which is what you want it also gives it just a little bit of texture it's almost impossible to feel um, but it's there and that is going to be perfect for grabbing onto the um, powders that we're about to use here to, to doll this up a little bit so uh, let's go ahead and get started with the powders as I said earlier we are using pan pastels they are uh, they do have a binding agent in them and that helps to, to keep the powder on the model. We are gonna be seal coating it uh, with dull coat again. And the easiest way to, to apply this um, is with a, with a brush, um, a very soft brush. The makeup brushes uh, are, are actually perfect for this. Um, so guys, uh, make sure you ask permission before you take your wife or your girlfriend uh, or your significant other's um, makeup equipment. Um, I'm going to be using a regular brush here and it's it's a very simple process just as you would with any other 
sort of material you're going to take it get a little bit on the on the brush this is a very soft paintbrush as I was pointing out brush off the excess and then you're gonna come over to your model okay so our, our goal here is I've, I've selected a very light almost a, a cream or a dust colored pastel and we're going to apply this um, where road dust and grime would be kicking up and we are just trying to get enough on here to make it look dusty and because we've used the uh, doll coat you'll notice that the color is sticking very very well a couple of things here um, the direction that you pull your dust uh, is important because it shows in the street pattern on the locomotive and what I mean by that is so rust typically is going to come from a high point down and dust is going to come from a low point up so you want to simulate that motion when you get into the the modeling here so um, in this case we've got we're, we're simulating dust which will be coming up from the tracks so we're pulling this up what that does is your dark your darker colors your your, your heavier applications are on the bottom and it kind of fans up as it goes I'm not going to do a whole lot more here. I've got a, an effect that I like, so I'm going to go ahead and do the other side. Okay, if you make a mistake in this phase, so let's say maybe this dust here is a little bit heavier than I want, you can fix that real easy. You take a damp, and I cannot express this enough, damp, not wet, paper towel, and just work it until you get enough of the material off that it gets to where you want. Now, you can also use this technique to sort of give you a, a differing pattern. Um, so, especially with dust, uh, your dust is gonna be built up on the locomotive, but if you're somewhere where it's been raining, uh, the dust pattern may be a little bit different just because it's gotten wet, it's been partially washed off. So think about how your, your, your locomotive is gonna be um, seen and how much dust may actually be on it once you've reached a, a point where you're happy um, go ahead and um, we can move on to the next step if there's no other step as far as weathering goes here you can go ahead and actually seal this again um, and in our case we're done with the powders um, we're going to move on to some of these other uh, techniques now so we're going to go ahead i'm going to put another layer of doll coat on here and then we're gonna move on to the next step. Okay, this is our, our result here. So we've got a nice speckled dust look. Um, it's focused all along the bottom here. This is what I was looking for. This makes it look like it's been out on the road. You'll notice that as it goes up, it's not quite as prominent, which is fine because that dust isn't gonna kick all the way up there from, from the trucks. Um, this has been sealed now, so you can touch it, doll coat's on it, you're not going to rub it off. Rem re remember that when you do use any kind of seal after um, you apply a weathering powder, a certain amount of that powder is going to come off no matter how much you try to get it to stay. So uh, just, just, just remember that. So if you've got it a little bit heavy, but maybe not a lot heavy, just, just understand that you are going to lose some of that detail. Uh, when 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 you finally uh, seal it so but it's it's done what I've wanted it to do it's it's lightened up this color a little bit it's highlighted all of the access doors and latches that sort of thing so the next step that we're gonna do here is we're gonna focus on these grills okay so um, we are using AK interactive we have a engine grime it's an enamel color it is a, a wash it goes on just like any other paint, a little bit on the brush, and we're gonna touch these radiator grills here. One thing that you'll notice, it immediately flows into the low spots of, of the grill, and if you've got your brush fully loaded, it will drip. Sometimes you want that effect, sometimes you don't. Um, it, it's really up to you and depending on what you're, what you're going for. In this case, we're keeping it a little bit cleaner. We're just trying to bring out the, the darker colors 
uh, that would be present on these grills. Remember, in, the, in real life, these are actually inside the engine compartment. The engine compartment is dark, so you're not seeing the blue um, of, of the locomotive's paint color through it, just like you are in the molded plastic. So um, we want to darken these up so that they look just like they're supposed to. And as you can see, that this liquid does flow a little bit. Um, it's, it's what you want it to do. And I am going just a little bit below here to give it a little bit of streak and grime and then we're gonna hit on our dynamic braking grills as well okay so that's that's the next step we're gonna do the same up here on the exhaust fans once again we are just trying to simulate the darkness that you would see um, if you've got a model where these are actual grills and they're opened up um, this is not a good way to do this because you'll get your your paint all on the inside but in our case because everything is molded in place and they're not actual grills um, this this works just fine so we want to get this coated nice and we're not going to focus too much here on the exhaust just a little bit just to give it a, a little bit of uh, of a dirty effect we're actually going to come back and do the exhaust stains here in, in just a minute so that's the effect that you're looking for it brings out that grill detail so go ahead and do that step next while i get the other side ready okay so we're starting to bring out a little bit more detail here we've got our dust we've got our radiators and our grills and our exhaust fans all showing a little bit more color bringing out some of the detail the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to add a little bit of grime so think about how this model is would be in real life you've got dirt sources all around you've got the trucks kicking up debris onto uh, the locomotive side you've got um, a locomotive that could be working in some dirty areas so it's working in industrial areas maybe it's doing some switching so there, there there's air pollution around there's there's just ambient dirt. The next thing that you've got is the weather itself. So you're going to get dirt and streaks and sort of things that appear up on, on the roof. Okay, that's what we're going to do next. And we're going to use another AK Interactive. It is another wash and appropriately called streaking grime. We're going to use it to do just that. Look like streaking grime. Once again, we're not going for a heavy weathering effect on this locomotive. We're going for something a little bit lighter. So um, we don't want to go overboard with what we're about to do. Just enough to add some visual interest um, because most people um, have it so that their layout is at an angle where you do see the roof of your locomotive. So let's go ahead and simulate some roof dirt. Okay, for this phase, I am using a very, very, very thin brush. There is my very, very, very thin brush right there. Um, and I am loading it up with a, a fair amount of material because I want, the, um, I want the paint to flow. And I'm just barely touching it to the little rivets here. And I'm tracing those rivets and I want the material, the paint to kind of flow out on its own from there. Uh, it will do it naturally. If it doesn't go quite where you want it, you can help it along. And you want to use a brush that's about this fine, especially in end scale, because you don't want this stuff in big streaks. Um, it's not going to look right if you do. And another thing that you've got to make sure you, you avoid is uniformity. And what I mean by uniformity is... Um, it's natural for us to get into patterns um, so we want to weather everything in in you know symmetrically pleasing patterns um, and that's not how nature does it so you need to resist that urge to make all sides look exactly the same so it's 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 challenging um, it maybe it's easier for some people but but my engineering brain um, doesn't doesn't like um, things that aren't symmetrical, so uh, I tend to work in patterns, and like I said, that's just not the way it's going to be in nature. So 
resist the urge to make any sort of pattern with your weathering. Um, the only thing that should have any kind of pattern is graffiti, uh, because that's something that, you know, we'll call it art, I guess, if you want to call it art. Um, but anyway, okay, so we're, we're just adding some, some detail here. One thing that you will notice, sorry, I'm, I'm paying more attention to my modeling and not enough to the camera. You will notice that this wash is going to find its own level. So it's going to, once it hits the model, it's going to go where it wants to go. Um, just let it go naturally. It's following grooves on the model. Also, the other thing is, um, you can always modify this, thin it, mix it um, with, with other uh, washes to get a, a different effect. I encourage you to do that. Um, it's kind of fun if you mix it with just a little bit of thinner. Uh, you get you can get a pretty pretty nice result um, from it. So play around with it a little bit, see how it see how it works, see how it flows. But it's uh, these washes are really nice and they're really good for for weathering. So that's about all I'm going to do up here on the roof. I'm going to let that. I'm going to let that dry a little bit um, and get ready for the next step. Okay, so now we've got our streaks on the, on the roof and they're drying. Uh, now it's time to take those streaks and, and bring them down the side. So you're going to get some material that, you know, it's, it's been on the roof, it's dirty. Now it rains and it gets washed down the side. So with a loaded brush, once again, still using the really thin brush, I'm just going to touch the model and I'm going to let that flow into the crack here and it connects to uh, a, a stain that I've got up on the roof so now it's just running down the locomotive a little bit and we're going to do that over here just going to let that soak in I'm going to let it follow the crack of that, of that uh, radiator access panel there tiny little bit right here okay so um, I, I've been saying you know don't make it look uniform so this is um, the one side of the locomotive here you know just a couple of couple of spots um, then on the other side here, you know, there's a couple of spots down here by the battery box. And then up here, once again, just kind of relating to what's on the roof. So, okay, that's that's about it. Uh, we're not gonna we're not gonna do anything else as far as these these spots are concerned. Um, I don't want once again, it's it's not to be heavily weathered. So we're gonna move on to the next step. Okay, and so now we're down to one of my favorite steps and that is weathering the trucks so here's a truck that I've already done and uh, I want you to see the effect that I'm getting there hopefully you can see it on the camera lens but basically it's a it's a streaking effect um, all over the over the entire truck now what this is simulating is um, first of all you're gonna have dust and grime that's kicking up from the tracks um, then that dust and that grime is gonna get wet uh, from rain and and oil leaks and all that sort of fun stuff that happens with with locomotives uh, plus you've got you know grease in the journal boxes and different components on the trucks that all leaks um, so you really want a, it's a streaking effect that you're looking for so um, there's the there's a done truck versus a uh, an undone truck uh, I don't know how well you can tell there but so uh, in the front you know there's there's a lot of detail but it's it's lost somewhat in that in that black haze um, where when you come around here, uh, we've brought some of those details out a little bit better. So first thing that I do is uh, we're going to AK Interactive here, and there's one that's called a Railroads Wash. I'm going to cover the entire truck in that. Um, while that's still wet, I'm going to do layers of AK's Africa dust effects and the NATO tanks color these are kind of a tan color that are real good at simulating um, uh, ballast and and, and and dust from the from the rails coming up and then the last item is just a little bit of rust 
Um, on this particular model, I'm using this very sparingly because this is a newer locomotive, let's say. So I have it just a little bit around the journal box, a little bit on the brake uh, shoes there. That's that's really all I all I want for this. Don't forget to use the same techniques that I'm going to show you here on the fuel tank because they get just as dirty. And remember, you got to think of how your dust and dirt is coming from. So it's coming up from the bottom, uh, and and most of it is 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 being streaked upwards. Okay, so I've got these washes pre pre mixed here as far as uh, getting them good and 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 shaken up here so that the uh, they're ready to go. And then I'm just going to take my brush and I'm going to apply the railroad brown um, fairly fairly liberally here just to cover all of the components um, if you have a highly detailed locomotive be very careful you don't want to use your brush and knock anything off that should go for your whole process um, with with all of these uh, models especially if you've got little grab irons and, and whatnot don't uh, you don't want to knock those off okay while that's still wet what you're gonna find is these colors um, they mix wonderfully together and they really don't require you to do a whole lot other than apply them. So, uh, try not to bounce my camera around here too much for you. Um, if you just come in here and remember, we are trying to follow what the grime and the dirt and the dust would look like. So we are following um, a downward streaking. Um, it's, it's been blown up by the, by the wheels and now we're using downward motion to simulate the dust returning um, back down onto onto the ground so go ahead and apply this if you apply too much don't worry um, you can because the subsequent layers are, are wet you can mix them together um, on the locomotive you'll get a really nice effect um, and uh, use your instinct when your instinct is telling you that you've mixed them enough You've mixed them enough and 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 and, and move on uh, if you get an effect that you really 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 like and you can't imagine the model without it um, then that's where you want to pay extra special attention to to not uh, not add additional layers that, uh, that that may damage the effect that you're looking for um, so just just use your eyeball you know what you're looking for if you've got um, some uh, pictures of a model you're trying to copy uh, that makes this process a lot easier these pigments or these I'm sorry these washes um, can actually be uh, mixed ahead of time so that you don't actually mix them on the model itself um, and that that method works just as well too they mix very easily um, and they're all compatible so you know once again, you've got a lot of options here. So with you know just a handful of colors, you can you can you can make a lot. If you want to get a better flow and a better mix, they do have um, basically it's either a mineral spirits or a um, or a turpentine type product um, that you can use. It'll help you mix them, um, much like you would with a uh, any other uh, enamel based paint. So. All right, I've got this pretty much where I where I want it now, so I'm going to go ahead and, and and move on. The last little bit of detail that we're going to add is is the rust. And once again, this is a sparing, um, sparingly applied uh, paint on this particular model, only because uh, I'm trying to simulate something that is um, relatively new. So what I'm doing is I'm taking most of the wash off uh, with, a, with a paper towel and then I'm hitting the few areas where I want to have a little bit of a rust effect so around the journal boxes here around the underside where the brake shoes are applied and maybe just a little bit here on the, um, the brake cylinders okay so that's that's the effect that I'm going for right now uh, let me grab the camera here and bring you up to get you a little better angle on it so that's what this baby's gonna look like um, once it once it dries up. 
when it dries so there's there it is still with all the colors wet um, the colors do mute a little bit um, and then they look uh, a little bit more streaky a little more um, dirty and eventually that this is going to look exactly like that once it once it sets up so you're going to do that all on all four sides when you've completed that um, it's just a matter of getting your handrails put back on uh, and then this is this is ready to ready to roll back on the tracks one thing that you may want to do is once you see once everything's dried if you want to hit it with another clear coat you can um, but in my case you know i, I clear coated this I'm, i didn't go back and rework anything so um, once I do the other side, this model will be done. Okay, we are down to the final few steps here of this particular model. And what we're going to want to do is weather the pilot. We had, we've talked about the sides, the undersides, and it's very important to remember that you're modeling 3D. So everything's got, you know, four sides, six sides, depending on how many sides you see. So while our our focus has been on on the long side so far it's very important to remember that the front pilot and the back pilot probably see the majority of the of the dust and dirt because at some point in time this will whether it's the the front pilot or the back pilot it'll end up being in the lead whether it's in a consist and it's running backwards or whether it's you know working on a switching so these areas tend to get very very dirty what i'm going to do here is very similar to the other uh, techniques that you've seen the only difference is i'm going to take full strength paint and weather the couplers and then the techniques that have been used on the rest of the model are going to be used on the front here so let's go ahead get our paints ready for the day and get started Okay, so how we're going to weather the pilots of the locomotive here, um, and like I said, is very similar to the other areas that we've already done. So we are going to take from AK Interactive, we're going to use Africa Dust Effects. And the goal here is to create the effect of the dust and dirt from the rails. It's going to get you know, kicked up uh, from normal travel here. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to apply this fairly heavily. Don't forget it is a wash, so what's going to happen is it's going to uh, try to seek a level, which means that it's going to flow downhill, especially if you've got the model sitting upright. This is okay. This is the uh, it's part of the effect that we're looking for. So if you're trying to do something different or you're trying to replicate something that's not that, you'll need to watch how you hold the model. All right. Now, and as you as you see now, some of those details that were previously hidden because they were just all molded in black have popped out like the molded in place MU hoses. Well, I'm not going to use those MU hoses. I'm going to actually put some BLMA uh, a separate applied details over top of that just because those don't look fantastic. The next thing that we're going to do is AK Interactive Streaking Grind. I'm going to apply this while the first coat is still wet because I want them to mix. And using a small brush and a nice downward stroke, I'm going to go ahead and add in this effect. Now this is nice and easy because on the back pilot there is no snow plow on this model. so. You don't have to remove it on the front pilot to do this you you do want to remove it and you want to paint them separately what happens it's the same with the handrails if you leave them in if you leave the snow plow in place it's very hard to get down behind it and you'll end up with a definitive line where you stop weathering and it's not going to look realistic so by removing the snow plow in the front you can get in there and and get all this detail so what we have now is we've got the, the white gray of the ballast and, and other dirt that's that's kicked up. Then we have the streaking grime. If you're weathering uh, a model that you want to show a little more age, you can add some rust spots in here. I'm not going to do that for this one. And then after that's done, I've already taken the time to do the front here. So I'll see if I can get you, get you a view of what that looks like when it's finished. Now 
that's the effect that you're going to get when these when these start to dry it's a grimy it's a dirty it's a dusty look and that is exactly what we're looking for so now that the paint has basically been applied to the pilot we're going to go ahead and put the snow plow back on and lightly weather it as well on these end scale models the pilot uh, and the snow plow are they just clip together so there'll be little tiny uh, pieces uh, you just line it line it up line up the holes and push it right back into place if it doesn't want to stay or if, because when you 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 uh, removed it if it if it damaged it in any way you can actually apply the snow plow with a little dot of glue to have it hold in place uh, if you don't need to don't do it but if you, just in case for some reason you would need to remove it and it should apply right back into place okay so there we got our snow plow back on and of course as it's unweathered it looks very very black and sort of monochrome against the other than some some dust that's picked up so we're going to go ahead and use that same technique on the snow plow and our end our end goal here is to weather it just slightly so that it looks like it's been over the road a bit once again i'm taking my africa dust effects and i'm hitting the spots where some of that dust would be accumulating especially on the outsides of the plow and we'll get, get you a little better view here so you can actually see what the hell it is i'm doing all right sometimes when you're working on a model you spend more time looking at the model and less time looking at what the uh what the camera's saying okay so that's that's kind of what i'm looking for here i'm gonna get a little bit up on the top And then we're going to come back in with a little bit of our streaking grime. And we're going to let these two mix so that we get sort of a brown, dusty effect on the front of the snowplow. By varying the amount of material on the brush and the amount of area you cover, you can change how much of this model is weathered. And of course, while it's still wet like this, you can also remove some of it if you get more on here than you than you want. When you're doing this, it's very important to remember that the stroke of your brush does affect the way that this looks. So if you stroke upward, it's going to look like the, the dirt and dust was stroked upward. If you stroke downward, obviously it's going to do that. And if you go side to side, you're going to get a different effect. So think about how that dust and that dirt would be on the on the real one and then you want to copy that now one step i'm going to do here is i've got a clean brush it's got just a little bit of paint thinner on it and i'm going to use it to thin this out a little bit and bring out some of the first mix them and also remove some of the wash just to because once again we're not modeling something that's it's very aged. Okay, so for for me right now, that is let me get you a little bit better focus here. That is the look that I'm going for on the front of this locomotive. You can see now that the details are brought out a little bit better, and it looks like something that's been on the road. So I'm going to do a few more touch-ups here. Uh, one of the things that I'm going to do is I'd like to add a little bit of uh, brown dust kicked up on the side of this. So I'm going to go do that with just some weathering powders. Same technique that I used to get the dust effect here. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and add the MU hoses as well. Okay, here we have our finished model. So uh, off camera, uh, and it's not that I you know, didn't want to show you, I just totally forgot to do it while I was on camera, was added the fuel streak and that is from a stain properly marked as fuel stains and i put it on both sides so at both places where you would potentially have a fuel spill i went and included that then i added the 
BLMA. Yeah, try to get in focus here for you. Those are the MU hoses. They are painted a tester's rubber color with a glossy silver at the ends for where the coupling would be. And then also in the front. And on the Atlas model, they actually have the, the MU hoses tucked behind the snowplow, but that's not how I wanted them. I wanted to bring it through the front. So you can see where I added a little bit of brown dust and dirt to the body. That was just a weathering powder and of course sealed it. And then there's our, our roof detail, the blackened fans, and then of course the little bit of dirt in some of the grooves here and a little bit around the horn. That's just where some dirt, you know, may collect. Just it's an obstruction on the roof. So a little bit of light weathering and now this model is ready to hit the road again. Hope these tips were useful for you. Um, take what you take what you can out of them. Don't be afraid to to weather uh, a model, especially a locomotive. And if it's your first one and you you don't you know want to run the risk of damaging it, um, just you know practice on on an old. We all we all have old locomotives. <laughs> we all have one that's probably never going to see the rails again. Uh, so take that one out and use that. But don't forget, as you're applying your layers, always use a clear coat. That gives you some sort of a, we'll call it a reset point, and you can take the weathering back to the, the last clear coat, basically. Don't forget to protect all of your electrical components. It's always a good idea to re-clean your locomotive, and while you have it off the layout, if you need to do any maintenance as far as on the gears and lubrication, that sort of thing. Now's the time to do it. So check your coupler heights and then get it back out on the road.